Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fest Football. All right, today we're going to take a little bit of a uh, short look at trying to create consistent pictures for young players, new players, uh, when you're struggling a little bit on defense and you've got some kids that don't have a ton of football uh, behind them or, or at least in your system coming up, how to create or do things to create consistent pictures so that they can get better reps doing the things that you want them to do. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Dome Hats, the headwear company we use. It's our new uh, orange park hat for this year. So you can see trucker mesh with orange and black. We've also got a white uh, and orange one with our logo on the front. Every hat has a story. Make sure you are letting Dome help you tell the story of your hat. Baker Sporting Goods, who makes our sideline apparel. It make, they make our, uh, our uniforms are distributed through them. Our spirit packs that our kids have uh, are all done by Baker Sporting Goods. So you can get all of your players, coaches, fans gear in one spot. So make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play Football, the, uh, the best play drawing tool on the market. Uh, I use it if I am going to do anything for my Patreon site or if I'm going to speak at any clinics in the offseason. I always use uh, Just Play Football to diagram the things that I want to talk about. And then it also has unique quiz features where your kids can, uh, you can quiz your kids on game plans and uh, playbooks and make sure that you can get a better understanding of what your kids understand. Game Strategy Sideline Replay System we use if you're looking for a highly affordable, highly reliable, highly reliable sideline replay system, make sure you check out GameStrat. Used them for three or four years now, never had one issue. If anything, it's user error. It's never been an equipment issue on their part. We always have connectivity. It's been absolutely awesome for us. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. You can set them up in your weight room. You can set them up out on your field. You can use them year-round in the weight room, outside of practice. Get thousands of reps without needing a partner. Elbows in, thumbs up. Learn how to strike, teach kids how to strike, and do it year-round, Difference USA. High and tight ball security training aid that you can use with your players. You get that instant auditory feedback when the ball is held in the right spot, you will hear a beep. When you hear the beep, you know that you have the ball held in the right spot with the proper points of pressure. If you do not hear the beep, you know that you are doing something wrong, so you get instant auditory feedback, so make sure you check out high and tight. And then Stand Perfect, which is a training aid we use to teach consistent and reliable stances for our kids. You put the Stand Perfects down on the ground exactly where you want them. If it's a right foot stagger, left foot stagger, wide receiver stance, whatever it may be, inside foot up, outside foot up, you put them on the ground exactly where you want them. Then your kids just step into them with exactly the stance you want. You say, hey, that's the distance I want between the front foot and the back foot. That's the distance I want between uh, or the width that I want as far as uh, shoulder width apart or just outside your hips. Now you can eliminate buzzwords. You don't have to worry about grabbing feet and saying, hey, move this foot in, move this foot up. Hey, left foot back, right foot back. They're already set down. The kids step in. That's what the stance feels like. Get thousands of reps understanding how to replicate and duplicate consistent and reliable stances. All right, so <clears throat> uh, for us, this year we've currently played three games on the varsity level. We are currently one and two on a varsity level, but we're also sitting at 4-0 on a JV level, and one of the reasons we are 4-0 on a JV level is we have kind of made things really simplistic for those kids to where we have backed off of some of the things that we do, and we only run four to five things on a JV level every week against every game plan, against every formation, and it allows those kids to play faster. The problem that we're having on varsity is we don't have a lot of returning defensive players. We are new at the linebacker level, we are new at the safety level, really our only returning players with a lot of time in the saddle are the D linemen. So what's happening is when we try to change fronts or we try to change coverages, we're changing pictures for the kids and then we're not getting enough quality reps and they're not comfortable enough in what we're trying to do. So what ends up happening is we can't fit runs, we can't play coverages, we can't line up correctly because we are not confident and comfortable in what we are doing. So there's something to be said about trying to keep, especially when you have newer players, younger players, or an entirely new. My defensive staff is brand new from last year, and, and a lot of those guys picked up late in the summer based on the scenario at the school of what we were going through with an AD and a new principal at the same time. And So it is what it is. As a head coach, you can't cry about it. You can't complain about it. You just got to do the best you can to get staff put together and get them on board and caught up to what you're trying to do. But early in the season where that affects you is a lot of those guys aren't used to teaching the things that you need to teach within the different fronts or coverages that you're trying to play. So what ends up happening is when you try to play different fronts and coverages, you have a hard time lining up, you have a hard time reading keys, 
you have a hard time fitting runs consistently. And then what happens is when kids don't have success, they start to revert back to their old mentality of how they used to do things and maybe just run around and try and chase the ball and don't read keys. So what then happens is you start questioning the scheme or the system and you start saying, well, we can't play it. And then you start making wholesale changes. And the next thing you know is that within three to four weeks, you play three to four different defenses or fronts or structures or fits uh, or styles of fits and reads and your kids can't do anything right. So there's something to be said about creating consistent pictures. So like if we were going to be in the tight front, all right, and we wanted to play three high safety defense, the more we can create this picture for our kids, the more we can create the three two box with safety, set a nickel and a safety that's an overhang, with the middle safety fitting off of number three, the more we can create that picture, all right, the more we can get our kids to get lined up, get reps, and understand how we now have to fit runs so that if we're facing uh, gap schemes that are power counter teams or whatever they may be, now when we make mistakes, we can talk to our kids about the mistakes we're making, where our eyes are, how we fit that gap scheme, what were we reading, all right, who were they pulling, how did we fit the puller, where did we try and get the ball sent to. So our kids can get consi consistent pictures that they can look at so that when we get, you know, if we get any type of gap scheme and we're going to get power, all right, and, and let's just say we're going to get it down gap, they're going to try and cut that off there, and they're going to work to kick the nickel, and they're going to pull on the mic, okay. We know with this front and the consistency of the tight front with the four eye, we know the ball's probably going to have to bounce a little bit wider so now we know when the mic fits, the mic can be wider and tight to the four eye, right? So now we want the mic to fit that block inside out and spill that puller so that if we're using the middle safety reading off of the fullback, we need that middle safety to get down there, all right, and be able to fit in between the nickel and the mic as the extra player. And then we need our will, depending on how they're blocking this, we need our will to be an overlapping runner, all right, when he gets a pull. So that now we can teach how we're going to fit that gap scheme, all right, and, and how we're trying to fit that scheme and, and exactly what we want to do to fit power in that scheme. And we can do it over and over again, and we can get consistent, solid reps, and then we can fix it as coaches because you can tell your kids, hey, we fit it wrong. You didn't wrong arm. You didn't spill. You didn't hard joint, all right? And then with that picture, we can talk to the kids and say, hey, look, guys, when we are playing this front and this structure and we get gap schemes, this is the way it's going to be blocked. They don't have a lot of choices of how they can block it. Okay, so they can leave guards in like a lot of times now versus this front. You'll get tackles pulling. So you'll get a guard that will stay and keep the leverage on the four eye and the tackle will pull on the power, which... That may change your reads a little bit for your backers if they've got to be able to see color pulling all right, behind the center and it's not the guard, it happens to be the tackle. But as far as how they're blocking the play, they don't have a lot of options of how they're going to block the play versus that front. So what ends up happening is you have a defined way of how you want to fit and how you want to read and you can now work on fixing the fits and the reads and the keys and, and you can try and get yourself into a system to where it becomes second nature how we react to certain gap schemes and how we fit them. So what happened to us early on was we, we struggled with some of the fits and then we changed how we tried to play. So we tried to go back and play in the first game because of the team we were playing. We tried to go back and play some of our 4-2-5 stuff. Okay, and we tried to go back and play with an eight, you know, it was still eight man front stuff. But all of a sudden it was even front and, and we had to talk about spilling so that when we got the double on a three technique here, we had to get this end to spill. And then we had to talk about the mic scraping paint tight. Okay, and now we were going to end up trying to send the ball to the nickel because now off the double they can probably get back to the will. So it's going to be tough for the will to be a free hitter. The will usually ends up being, depending on how they're climbing to him, he's usually some type of plugger on the backside, and now you've got a weak safety that's a cutback player. But now what you're trying to do from the 4-2-5 is you're trying to spill, get the ball to go a gap further, 
spill with the mic and send the ball and make the ball work out towards the nickel, right? So what happened though was that that's a different picture than the 3-2 tight front. When we get into the tight front, we've actually spilled the ball by alignment. So when we're in the tight front, because of the four eyes, we are spilling the ball by alignment. And just because of how we're playing, we are forcing the ball to go a gap wider. But by doing that, they are now going to block the nickel. Whereas the nickel in the 4-2-5 stuff was actually the extra free hitter. Well, now the nickel is going to get blocked and he's got to learn how to hard joint and get up here and attack this block and keep his outside arm and leg free and turn the ball back to the mic and the middle safety that are running the out. So when we switch back to the 4-2-5 because we were having a hard time with the tight front, we kind of changed the picture on the kids and we changed what they were looking at even though the reads were kind of the same and the fits are, are not identical but you know linebackers should be reading the same things we should be seeing gap schemes if we're reading center to puller or center to guard and we're getting gap schemes we should be able to run the same way and fit power counter the same way all right but there's something to be said with high school kids there's something to be said about leaving that picture and leaving them in a position I remember back in the day when Gary Patterson used to talk about their 4-2 stuff and they tried to leave that 4-2 box as consistent as possible because he used to call it home base. That was their home base. That is what they felt like they could play more often than not. And then eventually what happened was with the ball in the middle of the field, two by two, teams at the Baylors of the world, and teams that were starting to over split them, they were starting to now slide their backers a little bit and get into that 4-1 look and, and bump some guys out to play their two-read stuff. Otherwise, they were going to be stuck playing man-to-man -man out there if they wanted to leave the 4-2 box. But originally, and this is going back 15, 20 years ago, the premise of the 4-2-5 when Gary Patterson first started doing it, all right, they wanted to be in home base. Home base was that 4-2 look because they felt like their kids could play and read and fit and run from that 4-2 look. And as long as that 4-2 look stayed, they felt really good. When they had to break away from home base, now the picture's changed a little bit. So it's the same thing for us. We want to hold that 3-2 look as long as we possibly can. All right, and for us, one of the only ways it really changes is when we see two by two, all right? And that's something that, again, that you've got to wrap and kind of look at because now when we see two by two, we end up in a 3-1 box, and now, you know, the fits and the reads for the mic stay relatively the same, but now your nickel's walked out and your willies walked out, so they're kind of reading tackles, which your nickel was always reading the tackle, even in two-back stuff. So he is kind of in a position where he always is, but now your will goes from a box player to walked out, reading through the tackle, understanding how to sit for RPOs and possibly get quarterback runs coming to him, which is different than when he's in the box. Now again, if we wanted to stay home base, and teams came out in two by two, if we wanted to stay home base to keep these guys comfortable, well now we've got to do something on his backside where we've got to possibly lock and play some man-to-man -man stuff on the backside because we, it's very hard to play palms if we don't bump to read stuff if we don't walk that will linebacker out. So if we leave that will linebacker in the box to keep that consistent picture, we'll get truer reads, we'll get truer fits. These guys will get used to how they fit runs off the action of the nose and then how things get fitted off the four eyes. So the more you can keep that picture consistent, the more comfortable these guys will get fitting the windows that are going to come open based on certain run schemes. All right, because as the year goes on, what you're going to end up finding out, like for us in our first three games, bottom line is we probably played in our first three games, we've seen power counter 80% of the time. Maybe we saw a little bit of inside zone, some jet sweep action. But at the end of the day, we still see power counter 80% of the time. So if you could just focus on understanding what you need to see, what you're going to see, and what you need to fit, and how you need to fit it, and you could create consistent pictures for the kids, you can do a better job fitting runs. And sometimes as coaches, all right, at least I know I'm guilty of it, when we are young and we struggle, all right, I try to change the scheme up because I feel like we're not good enough playing the base scheme. And the only way we're going to be able to win games is if we change the scheme up and try and confuse the offense. Well, all that really does is it also confuses your kids and it makes it more difficult for your kids. So 
There's weeks where we stumble into something and we're sending five and we're moving and we may not be really fitting things great, but we are disrupting the other team and maybe the other team isn't as good and they can't block some of the movements, so we're getting away with it. But then the following week we go play a really good team that can block those movements and now we're right back to square one. We can't fit runs. We have no idea where we're supposed to be. Every picture looks different. Every play looks different. So when you watch it on film, you're like, I don't even know how to coach or critique that because I don't even know how we're lined up, where we should be, because our kids don't know. Our kids aren't getting comfortable. So we want to get back to being a little bit more consistent with the picture, creating that picture, trying to get that 3-2 box with the safeties and then the middle safety, trying to get that as conducive as we can. All right, obviously there's certain things, you know, three by one is going to make you do things a little bit differently. You got to try and adjust. We want to try and make our three by one adjustment as, as simple as possible so that the box and most of the guys in the box maintain the same reads, keys, fits, so that they can all get used to, you know, you want your, you want your mic and your will to get used to working off your nose and your four eyes. You want to get, you want them to get comfortable with how your nose and your four eyes play and how they're going to play versus certain blocks or certain schemes so that as they get more comfortable with that they'll be able to fix and fit certain things that aren't going to happen every time exactly the way you draw them up. So run fits become a kind of moving working dynamic every week and, and you really want to get it to where your kids can rep the run fits so that when they see certain blocking schemes you know you're going to get into certain spots when you see power counter all right, but at the same time, it's you know the game of football and playing defense is a moving, living document from play to play, week to week. If a backer doesn't fit it exactly the way he's supposed to, well then I need my middle safety or the other backer to fix him. If my four eye doesn't play it exactly how he's supposed to, I'm going to need my mic or my will to fix my four eye or my nose because they're behind them. So it also becomes you know not only a matter of consistent pictures and not only a matter of getting reps you know so like this week one of the things we want to focus on on defense is making sure that we get more reps in our run fits and making sure that we're coaching and making sure one thing i told the d-line coach yesterday was i said i said coach you know you always coach the d-line from behind them every once in a while you should come on this side and coach them so you can see exactly what they're looking at because i caught some of our d-linemen yesterday staring in at the football well how can you block rec off of the person in front of you if your head is staring in at the football. All right, you can see the football through peripheral while playing a four eye on your key. And then I told him, I said, hey guys, I want to see our D lineman strike somebody on every play. I don't want to see us trying to swim, penetrate gaps just to make plays that you think you're going to make. I want to see us physically put our hands on and strike and separate tackles as four eyes and the center as the nose guard. I don't want to see us always try and run away from a block. All right, or turn down contact because we think we need to make a play. I want to see us physically strike tackles. I want to see us snap some heads back. I want to see us strike a center and not just constantly look to swim or penetrate every now. So I told the D-line coach, I said, why don't you coach every once in a while from this side so you can see their helmets and you can see what they're looking at. All right, so hopefully that helps you guys teaching uh, consistent looks, consistent pictures, consistent fits. The more you can do that, I think the better your kids will play, the more consistent you'll get uh, within their reads, and then you can fix things a little bit better, and your staff, your D-line coach, and your linebacker coach, and your safeties coach, they can start talking to each other about fits, and hey, jet sweep, power read, we fit that wrong, we should have been here, he should have been the quarterback player, these guys should have been playing the jet sweep. Uh, you can start to talk about those things because each level, every coach knows what the D-line should be doing versus those blocks. We know what the backers should be doing versus those blocks. We know what the safety should be doing. And then if we're three high, we know what the middle safety should be doing. So now we can talk about run fits with the coaching staff and not have just silence when everything's going wrong. There's nothing worse than playing bad defense and then having nothing but kind of silence and blank stares every time the offense runs a play because – you have no, no idea how to fix it because you have no idea how you're lining up, no idea what your kids are looking at, no idea how they're trying to fit things. And then your kids, you know, kids are kids. They're going to resort back to what they know. When things start going the wrong way, they're going to resort back to staring in the backfield and trying to chase down the quarterback and the running back, and that's just going to blow your fits up even more. So your fits have to be something 
that is about consistency, trying to create the same picture, the same reads, the same fits, sending the ball to the same people over and over again in as many formations as possible, keeping it as consistent as possible without changing the fronts, the coverages, or any aspects that are going to make the fits change every single down. Obviously, you're going to do some things. You're going to pressure every once in a while, and that's going to change how you fit some things. Okay? That's okay every once in a while, but you don't want a different fit every two snaps. So you don't want to be in a different front and coverage every two snaps or a different pressure every two snaps because then the fit changes. And unless you're a really good coaching staff with some really smart players, every time those fit changes, when it's live and, and the bullets are flying out there in the game and things aren't going your way, your fits are going to get really, really poor because they're changing, they're not consistent, and then your kids are going to want to run to try and make plays because nobody likes losing. So if you're playing poorly on defense, your kids don't like losing. All right, They may not know exactly what they're doing to help cause the losing to elevate. So when you don't fit things correctly, when you don't read keys, you know the kids think that they're trying to make plays because they don't want to lose, but they don't realize that they are just making the losing happen quicker and, and they're making the touchdowns and the big runs and passes escalate themselves that much quicker because now that they are resorting back to their old ways, now there's no way to fit anything. You have no idea who's going to be where, and it's either you get lucky and have somebody in the right spot, or they just keep hitting their head on the goalpost because there's no way to fix anything because you don't have a system of how to fit. All right. So one of the things you should also talk to your defense about, and, and we have to do a better job, and I started doing it this past week, is do they understand what you mean by run fits? A lot of times your kids don't exactly understand what you mean when you say, hey guys, we got to work on a run fit period. We got to work on. I, I think they just see runs and think that you have to tackle runs, and if you tackle it for a one or two yard gain, you've done a good job. More importantly, you need to know why you're fitting things a certain way, where you belong based on the defense you're playing and the, and the blocking scheme that you're seeing, and then figure out why or it is or it isn't working. You know, and I told our guys yesterday if you do your job 55 times straight and you do it correctly every time, and somebody else does it wrong or misses a tackle, that 56th time you've got to do your job again. Because the first time you come back and don't do your job, because the first couple times you did your job it wasn't successful, now we're going to end up with even bigger problems, all right? And you're going to end up with, you know, even bigger dilemmas going later on down the road in the year because now you are aborting from the system and doing your own thing because when you do it right, these other guys can't get it right. And now all of a sudden you've got even bigger holes in the defense because now nobody wants to do right because they don't think it's working. So, you know, that takes consistency, it takes time, it takes culture, it takes coaching over and over again to get kids to understand what the fit is, what the picture is, how we're trying to do it. And that's something that we're trying to go back to now. We're trying to get back to a little bit more consistent fronts, a little bit more consistent coverages so that we can teach consistency in the run game. All right, I hope you guys are having a good year. Hope it got off to a good start. Hope you guys are winning. Hope everybody is staying safe. Hopefully uh, the pandemic or the new Delta variant pandemic isn't affecting you guys too much. We've been hit by it a little bit, but right now the season still goes on, so we got to keep moving forward. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. Remember to turn your notifications on so you know every time we do a uh, YouTube video or I go on YouTube Live, you get that notification. Thumbs up, thumbs down if you like the video or don't like the video. Always leave a comment. Every comment I can see or message I can see, positive or negative, I try to respond to if it's about football. So please leave a comment, and if I see it, I will try and respond to it. I appreciate everything you guys do for Play Fast Football. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I'll see you guys next time.